Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Minnesota Deals Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Krakowski, joined, as always, by Rafik Moore with Caspian Group. Hello, everybody. And today we have a very appropriate topic for this time of year, this season, this market. We're going to talk about how do you find deals in a market where everyone thinks it's so hard to find those deals. And that's something that you know a lot about. Um, I don't know if I know a lot about, but I've dealt, uh, I've been in this market for a long time and I've uh, worked in a market where the inventory was very abundant, like in 2009 mm -hmm. and 10. I've been in the market where uh, the market was really, really tight in 2006 and 7, uh, 6, eight, 5, where irrational exuberance set in multiple offer situations, 18 people Jeez. walking through a duplex or a single family or an apartment building. Sounds and now there. it's a very similar <laughs> time. So yeah. it's, it's very refreshing to sort of reminisce about those times and sort of uh, uh, live today uh, reflecting what, what has happened in the past. Yeah, no, and I'm really excited to hear your take about it because I think last year, uh, the last 12 months, I've been like, how do I find deals? Mm -hmm. Like I have stuff I know I want to do. How do I create it? How, and I just couldn't find them. And now, I don't know what it is, but I'm starting to find that I have a ton of deals coming in and there's tons of opportunities. And I was trying to, I was thinking, I'm like, why? What, what, what's happening? What's different? So do you have an answer, a suggestion? Maybe? No, I was hoping you would tell me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, I think we as human beings, are machines programmed to identify and keep certain amount of information mm -hmm. that uh, you know gets us excited you know so I've learned about a concept of reticular activation mm -hmm. from my uh, late uh, mentor who unfortunately is no longer with us and I remember sitting with him and he says Ravik do you know anything about reticular activation I was like what is it he says you know it's like you program yourself to see patterns. You program yourself to see the opportunities and how you can make money in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. If you program your mind deeply on a subconscious level, you'll be seeing it all over the place. I was like, wow, I want to learn this. Let me write this down. So I go and research it. I yeah. study it. I, and it's exactly what it was. Uh, apparently, reticular activation is a system in your head, in your mind, that is, is uh, responsible for you being excited about a certain thing, certain item, certain uh, idea. Uh, it's very similar to uh, you're all of a sudden wanting to buy a, a red BMW. Mm -hmm. And if you really, really crave red BMW and you have it on your monitor or, or whatever, you think about it, all of a sudden as you drive around, all you see is red BMWs. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and sort of under that concept, what we have been doing is programming ourselves internally in our company and uh, with our with you. Uh, every time we talk in our sales meetings about what we're looking for, I sort of try to activate your guys' um, mind with the, you know, if you drive by a, a property that's abandoned, dilapidated, and it's a large commercial property or a small single family home, which we don't have homes anymore, but, and you go forward with the idea of researching and finding out about it, you will have more opportunities to transact. And I think that's what happens. Now, beyond just driving by a property, it's knowing the right people and asking the right questions. Right. Talking about attorneys, real estate agents, wholesalers. And if you, on a daily basis, go out there and reticularly activate your centers and, and talk to people and, and, and look for that information, your pipeline will be full. And that's what I have. I mean, right now, I have seven or eight offers going on because on a daily basis as I drive by, I cannot pass by a property and not They're screaming at you. notice like and say, oh yeah. my God, um, 123 Main Street yeah. in Chaska or Chanhassen. Uh, I text to uh, my title lady or text to my assistant to get the information, get a hold of the owner, and boom, we, we start the dialogue. Yeah. So and that's what it is. You can apply that too, I think, to the types of people that you want to attract in your life. Absolutely. And what I think you do a great job of always talking about in sales meetings, but something that you know I realized uh, as well um, is you know the people with the, all the integrity are the people that you really want to surround yourself Absolutely, with. Absolutely, yeah. It makes your life so much easier. Life is hard enough. This business is hard enough. We work a lot of, a lot of hours. Of so why not do it with people that you enjoy being around? Yeah, and being a desperate uh, to do deals, I remember 10, 15 years ago, I would beg these guys with <laughs> money to do deals and they kept, they made me feel like a, a you know, worthless person. I, and I, I, I mean, it, it doesn't even have to be at all, all about the deals too. Yeah. I met a person, they're a tenant, 
they're looking for a 700 square foot space to lease. It's not, not a ton of money, as you know, in, in repping them and helping mm -hmm. them find it. But the attitude was there. They were such positive, great people. It's like, just I just want to help you. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. Take Versus money out of the a, table. You know, oh, I want to buy a $2 million property and uh, you'll get, you know, $60,000 commission. But then they have 15 other people working for them and, and they really are not, don't know what they want. So, yeah, I mean, understanding that the audience is serious yeah. and, and, and being a serious person yourself, you know, uh, no, don't be a tire kicker. Obviously, you, you need to zone in on what you're looking for. Is it a red BMW or is it a distressed home or is it a distressed commercial piece of real estate? Know what you want. Go after it with, you know, zealous uh, passion and, uh, you know, people will see it. People will, you know, your, your, your passion is infectious and uh, they will try to collaborate with you and, you know, put money with you if you, if, if you need money or provide you with the real estate. It happens all the time. Yeah, I think uh, another thing that, that you're really good at is, uh, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about the integrity component, but if you're out there and you're, you know, everything is a skill, it takes practice. How do I meet people? How do I interact with them in a way that I can provide value to them? You know, it, if you do that for two, three months, People aren't necessarily going to bring you deals, but you do that for one year, two years, go on to three, four, five, six, seven, you start developing a reputation. Mm -hmm. You don't even necessarily, I mean, the reticular activation, that's the active way to go find deals, right? That, that's the immediate today, every day doing things, but creating a legacy and creating a, a reputation is extremely important. And it helps you keep a pipeline going because you totally. can't always be actively looking for deals. Sometimes you need someone to bring you a deal and, and if, you know, I kind of made the illusion before we spoke here where if a commercial deal comes up, what are the odds that anyone that we both mutually know is going to be like, let me call Daniel. No, they're probably going to call you well, first. And that's yeah. because they, you have that reputation. You have the history of performing. You have the experience and you also have the reputation for transacting fairly and taking care of people. I think that's extremely important. Um, I value creating meaningful relationships with people who add value to your life and then you can recipro reciprocate in, in the same fashion. So uh, uh, I think meaningful relationships is so important to me personally and if, especially after reading principles and yes. he talks yep. about it and he sort of breaks it down. Shout out Ray Dalio. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you for the book. He needs our shout outs to, to feel <laughs> successful. So. so, but my point is if you focus on creating meaningful relationships and really take care of the person who sends you a deal like a realtor or a wholesaler, or uh, uh, an attorney, or uh, a title lady or who works hard to get your deals done. And if you really make them feel like you care about them and, uh, and actually do care about them, obviously, uh, and help them out with whatever they need within real estate or outside of it, I think that's how you create a community of people who cheer for your success. Right. You know? And your ability to perform and execute, to get those people to continue to send you deals, has so much to do with your ability to continue to accumulate skill. Totally. Um, you know, the philosophy is the part that I think, you know, we've, we've addressed this in the past. That's a hard part to teach someone who doesn't have it, but all of us should always be striving to improve our skills. Well, it, philosophy, I think, I'm sorry, cut, yeah. cutting you off. Philosophy is like a software, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, on top of, and, and, and knowledge is a particular app in mm -hmm. your operating system. If you have a correct software that runs all the apps in your mind and you make the right decisions and you're fair in interacting with other people and if you're honest and, uh, you know, transparent, yes, there will be bad people. Yes, there will be scumbags that will come and go. Oh, yeah. But as long as you recognize that they took advantage of you or, or uh, you know, uh, lied to you or cheated you or whatever and take it in as a lesson. And that's what Stoics do. Yeah. Stoic philosophers. This is a lesson. Thank you very much for <laughs> helping me out to recognize my blind spot in dealing with you or this situation. Uh, yes, it cost me a million dollars, cost me 300,000, cost me 50,000, cost right. me, you know, 200 bucks. Thank you very much. It was a very valuable lesson. And get the hell out of my life right you know and that opens time, an opportunity for you to bring the right people and if you have if you i think create, that's a good philosophy to have though if you, i really do yeah, totally if you create a, a a life where you're surrounded by a whole bunch of good positive human beings you live up in the paradise oh absolutely right? but the skill component when we look at that and and you know the i realize that in this tighter market the deals that i'm doing are getting more and more complicated right for for the, a very similar profit margin to what they were just two and a half years ago. And the reason is, 
you know, I feel like by spending all the time and focusing on improving my skills, going to seminars, uh, reading everything that I possibly can, watching videos on YouTube, uh, listening to podcasts, it gives me the ability to go a little bit deeper and understand a little bit more and see some some angles that my, someone my else may not see, right? I think if you're a better player in whatever sport you are engaged in, if you're a better player, you increase your number one risk tolerance mm -hmm. because risk many times has to do with not knowing. Right. But if you know, you might feel more comfortable and execute on a transaction versus somebody else who has not. For example, I have a, a mentor who is amazing at apartments. He, he develops apartments and hotels. And I meet with them and I'm like, yeah, great. I want to learn from you, etc." And then I mentioned that I got a 60,000 square foot warehouse building. Mm -hmm. It went way over, over, right over his head. <laughs> yeah. he, he doesn't get it. He doesn't want it. He doesn't have anything to do with it doesn't want anything to do with, with that kind of a deal because for him it's a really really high risk because he doesn't necessarily want to or study it or understands it nothing wrong with it right so if you want to have a multitude of deals if you want to have a large pipeline the other thing you can do is you can increase your uh, area of expertise or or increase your box you know box within which you play uh, you know spectrum you know we, we flip houses we can do this we can you know sometimes if an opportunity presents itself we, you know, we do a strip mall yeah. or, or we do a warehouse building or a mixed use property. The other thing that you can do also is increase your area of um, uh, a territory. So we bought a property in Farmington. Mm -hmm. We bought a property in New Prague. I've never even know about New, known about New <laughs> Prague until I bought this property. <laughs> I'm stuck in that deal. But the point is, if you tell yourself a story that the market is tight and there's no deals, that will become your reality. Right. But if you talk to every single person every day with the expectation of finding a deal, with the expectation that you're going to be very, very busy, I think you will create your reality. You will shape yeah. you know, uh, life and, and, and be able to transact. And we have a huge pipeline right now as a result of us constantly doing all these uh, uh, things. Well, I want to address the expanding your box concept too, because Sure. Does it, you know, being more of a generalist, it, it exposes you to a few other opportunities. You know, you might just run into something that you ordinarily wouldn't have understood. It wouldn't hit your reticular activation, right? You wouldn't even, because it's not for, again, like your mentor sees this industrial building, it means nothing it's to him. Focus thing for him, yeah. But at the same time, I think you can take a lot of the expansion as well and apply it to your specialization by expanding your box. So for example, if you're a residential real estate investor, if you do some investment into commercial real estate, do you think that's gonna be an advantage or a disadvantage to have a whole new bag of tricks, a whole new set of strategies that you can perhaps deploy into the residential market as well to just be that one step above get everybody else? Level. Yeah, you could buy a six unit apartment building, for example, we have one for sale, right. you should buy it. Uh, <laughs> you, could, uh, you could do something yeah. else. No, but um, yeah, I think that's a, that's a very valid point. Um, you know, I've been a prolific student of, of life. I've always, I've, I've gotten every license that, that there is, broker license, insurance license, uh, you know, a contractor license, because I wanted to be able to cover those territories of, of knowledge. And uh, I was, we had a lot of residential real estate going on. We did 60 houses one year. I mean, it was ridiculous amount of volume. Of course, margins have gotten suppressed. It was really tough, a lot of moving pieces. But, um, you know, the next step for me was to really organize, which I wasn't really organized, to get to 100 houses, which uh, some of our friends do a really good job of. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, learn a little bit about commercial real estate and do stuff in that realm. I'm sort of itching to learn something about development, but the numbers don't seem to work. I haven't quite figured out uh, yeah. what's going on there. And, and I almost feel like we're in the uh, 11th hour of this economy, so I'm sort of risk averse to get there. But, but then again, I'm risk averse because I don't know. And people have been putting up apartments right and left all over the place. And I sit here dumbfounded thinking, man, I'm missing something. There's got to be something there. So improving your expertise in a particular uh, field, if it's close to the, the field where you play, I think will only make you stronger. And being a resourceful operator will ultimately make you more money. In, in my world, um, I'm in, we are in a distressed commercial real estate uh, business. So distress means we can buy a distressed mall, we can buy a distressed apartment building, we can buy a distressed, any bricks, bricks and sticks within Twin Cities that are broken, I wanna be able to get in there, fix it, and then let the investor who wants you know, uh, cash flowing uh, you know, 
cap rate type investment. I want them to take take me out or yeah, or refinance for management. So that's what we did, what we do. Yeah, and you know we we talked a little bit about the skill side. We talked a little bit about the integrity and the the personal connection side and building those lasting relationships. So. If I'm gonna give any homework, which hopefully some listeners out there will actually take the initiative and go for it, is you know, think about the people that you're interacting with. Think about who do you do business with regularly. Uh, if, if you're someone who's trying to get deals from wholesalers, well, have you ever taken the wholesaler out to lunch? Have you ever sat down with them and understood what's, what's the goal? What are they trying to accomplish in their business? You know, or are you just seeing an email that comes out, walking through, just kind of nodding your head at them? Spend the time, get to know them a little bit. Create a um, meaningful relationship with them. Exactly. And you know, you might not hit it off with them. That's okay. Try again. Find somebody new. You might find that you have now a new friend, which is obviously a good thing, uh, especially when you're as busy as many of us are, because now you have someone that you like, that you get to work together with. Uh, and I think you and I are both fortunate enough to have plenty of people like that in our life. Absolutely. And then if you change your paradigm yeah. and become a person who can create tremendous amount of value then all you need to do is meet somebody meet somebody who has a problem with liquid funds in the bank right you know and there's a lot of people who have pro a problem of having too much money in the bank and you team up with them and there's a lot of obviously I, mean, I met with a gentleman yesterday he's got 20 million dollars and and you offer to him a part of your knowledge part of your system part of your network to deploy his funds and partner up with him mm -hmm. and uh, give them the best you of you as far as creating value for their money. Buy a distressed asset for, you know, whatever. Spend a little bit of money to fix it up and then you created a, a, a value and split it with them. That's how you can basically get there. Yeah. Um, so it all starts with you. You are a unit of this economy. And if you improve yourself and create more value as a result of your knowledge, that's where the success is. That's where you know you can make a lot of money. Can you make a million dollars? Oh yes. yeah. Can you make ten million dollars? Yes. Can you make a hundred million dollars? It's all about your time that you spend on a particular task, right? And your ability to transact and create value. And you can feel good about it. I don't right? want to sound redundant. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, yeah. Rafiq, thank you for joining us. Thank I think you very we much. Got a great overview of a lot of ideas. Hopefully, some action points that you guys can use to go find some deals. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.